You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. Under head coach Jorge Sampaoli, who succeeded Andres Villas Boas in February 2021, Marseille have recruited smartly. William Saliba and Matteo Genduzzi have joined on loan from Arsenal, while Conrad de la Fuente and Cengiz Under add pace and flair out wide. Young Borussia Dortmund centre back Leonardo Belerdi has also been signed, in addition to fullback Polirola, defender Luan Perez, and stylish Brazilian midfielder Gerson, for 25 million euros from Flamengo. And Sampaoli, a self declared disciple of Marcelo Bielsa, who of course himself managed Marseille, promises to deliver an exciting, tactically fascinating style of football at the Stade of Velodrome. Sampaoli has followed Bielsa before, taking over as Chile men's head coach in 2012 after Bielsa had been in charge. This followed an incredible stint in charge of Universidad de Chile, so far Sampaoli's most successful tenure. And while Bielsa started brilliantly with Marseille, leading the league in December 2014 before falling away to finish fourth in his one full season, Sampaoli will be hoping he can marshal his new resources to challenge for the title in Liga. Having taken over last season, Sampaoli shifted Marseille to a back three, regularly lining up with the same sort of 3-4-1-2 system he used to great effect with Chile. This system saw width maintained by the wing-backs, although sometimes one centre-back also drifts wider to facilitate ball progression from deep. The central midfielders alternate ahead and behind opposition lines of pressure so that there is always a kind of diamond shape through which to recirculate the ball deep. This 3-4-1-2 then forms a sort of 3-2-5, or even a 2-3-5 in the attacking phase, with plenty of rotation among the players' positions. As with Guardiola coached sides who look like this in the final third, a frequent aim is to achieve cutbacks from the spaces between the six-yard box and the horizontal edge of the box. The attacking focus with any Sampaoli team is possession and verticality. This means moving the ball quickly through the opposition lines, but doing this through quick pass and move rotations rather than just lumping it up the pitch. All players need to be comfortable on the ball to achieve this style, which is why watching the development of Saliba especially will be fascinating. Sampaoli's teams generally press ferociously, although this can take time to institute. Marseille will also generally try to stop up the middle of the pitch, forcing teams wide, and then pressing those areas hard to affect turnovers into counter-attacking situations. Last season, they tended to defend their half of the pitch zonally with a compact block, channeling the opposition wide. It's an area of difference from Bielsa, but Sampaoli does also tend to favour having a spare man at the back, like Bielsa does. So far, Marseille have had a mixed start, and performances have showcased the good and bad of the team and what makes them such a confounding but exhilarating watch. Sampaoli has already shown some points of difference, the main shift being the use of four midfielders in a flexible square ahead of the back three. This is another Bielsa tenet, the idea that rotation requires players to be comfortable in a variety of positions and roles and so using midfielders in defence or wide, but deep areas, gives this degree of flexibility. Generally, Sampaoli has deployed a kind of 3-3-1-3, with Dimitri Payet starting in a false nine role. The wing-backs of last season have been replaced by central midfielders, which brings noticeable differences tactically. Build-up is initially narrow, with the back three splitting, but the midfield box, with Gerson and Genduzzi ahead of Pape Gay, Valentin Rangier or Boubacar Kamara, staying mostly central. Width is now maintained by the wingers, while Gerson especially makes plenty of runs in to out and towards the wide left area. Genduzzi also moves into a right wing-back role if Marseille cannot progress the ball vertically through the centre, with one of the deeper midfielders doing a similar job on the right, but tucked in more. Gerson's movement into the wide left area allows De La Fuente to make underlapping runs and often gives Marseille a staggered 3-2-5 shape when in possession deep in the opposition half. It also gives the side multiple passing options in deep build-up, with the wingers doing a huge amount of work to offer receiving options either wide or tucking in. This makes Marseille quite press-resistant in their own half, as there are plenty of ways to progress the ball through quick rotations in midfield, with the fanned-out defenders offering recycling options. Presence in the box has been supplemented by runs from midfield, with Genduzzi especially aggressive, while the wingers also hit the box when the ball is coming from the opposite side. Payet has a free roll, dropping deep to facilitate attacks, drive forwards or staying high for crosses or through balls. 
These rotations make Marseille hard to mark, but can leave them lacking a genuine striker in the box. It also requires a lot from the players and can leave the side open on the counter. And early games this season have shown Marseille's weaknesses as well as their strengths. The setup leaves a lot of space out wide, asking a lot from the centre backs to cover those spaces that orthodox full backs or wing backs would ordinarily cover. This is especially clear on counters when they are attacking in the 3 2 5 shape, where the midfield double pivot and centre backs can be pulled out of shape with good passing and movement. So it is a high wire act, brilliant in attack, vulnerable in defence, and capable of throwing away a lead. Whatever Marseille do this season, it'll be worth paying attention to. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalised experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions and podcasts. Not to mention, it's all ad-free. And you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.